the one left bottom, this one, the length of the curve is this. Let me also use a blue so you know. Do you see what I'm talking about, guys? The length of that curve is expressed as this blue line, which is the, uh, the, uh, the projection of the curve onto the horizontal axis. What about the one on the right-hand side bottom? Well, there it is. That blue line is the expressed or defined as the length of that curve. Does everybody follow what I'm saying here? One other thing is the gradient, the gradient of these tangent lines. All right? So the back tangent, for example, here has a gradient, or you can think of it as a, as a slope. All right? So the back tangent has what they call G1. That's the slope of the back tangent. G2 is the slope or the gradient of the forward tangent. All right? G1 and G2, either one could be positive or negative. All right? Now, let's go back to the previous uh, slide. So now, the first equation here, top left, e, we know what E is, G1, G2, I just told you, L, I expressed what that is, and the denominator is just the number 8. All right, now, let's look at the next, slide, the next uh, equation. And by the way, that next equation is important um, because it does show up on the test. And what they're asking you to do is to find what's known as uh, the rate of grade change, the rate of grade change. All you have to do, guys, is use that equation, all right? R is equal to G2 minus G1 over L. Let's go to uh, the next uh, slide here. All right. This is what they're going to give you. This could be all the information that they will give you about a vertical curve. So they will give you, let's take a look. First of all, at the very bottom, curve length, 800 feet in this case. All right, so the, the length of the curve in this case is 800 feet. Look for the gradient, G1, in this case, plus 4%. So it has a positive slope. That means for every 100 foot of horizontal, this line goes up four units in the vertical direction. Now. What about G2? Gradient of the forward tangent is minus 3. So this has a negative slope. For every 100 foot of horizontal, drops 3 units. What else do we know? The station of the PVI is 65. All right, the station of the PVI is uh, 65. And then Um, Matthew uh, is saying in slide 55, what does T mean, the, the capital T? I, I'm going to define that in just a minute. We will look at that together in just a minute, please. Um, then they give you the elevation of PVI also. So think about what we have. We know the station of the PVI and the elevation at PVI. Let me tell you about the stationing of this. We are going to show the stationing on the horizontal axis. All right, so station 65 is here. The stationing is, stationing is done on the horizontal, uh, horizontal plane, all right? So now pay attention. Is, if the station at PVI is 65, please tell me. Any one of these questions I'm asking you could be a some, uh, independent question on the test. What is the station at PVC? Think about it. If the station at PVI is 65, what is the station at PVC? Well, that is the function of how long the curve is. All right? So this everything is symmetrical about this parabolic curve. 
everything is. So Amanda is saying 60, 61. Amanda is correct. And how do we do it? Well, if, if the entire curve is 800 feet, well, C to PVC would be 400 feet, and C to PVT would be 400 feet. All right? So the answer is 61. Ryan, I don't know where you got that answer, but the answer should be 61. All right? Now, what is the station at PVT? The station at PVT should be 69 plus 00. 69, guys. 69. All right. Um, Arash, it's, everything is symmetrical. Don't worry about the gradient. All right? All right. Um, everything is symmetrical. All right. The next thing, guys, they can give you the information that I, that, that I just gave to you and pay very close attention. This could be a single question on the test. Could you please tell me the elevation on the grade, grade line? All right. This, this, this is the grade line. All right. What is the elevation on the grade line at the station 64 plus 00. zero. Where is 64 plus 00? Zero zero? 64, station 64 is here. Does everybody follow? So what is, this, what is the elevation on the grade line at that station? In other words, what's the elevation at this point? Who can tell me? Well, how do we do it? Use the slope or the gradient of the back tangent. That is 100 feet away from the PVI. So how many feet does it drop? Four. So what would be the elevation? Would be 260.2. First of all, I'm mov moving to 58 gives you the difference stations. Now, look guys, this is something that you should be able to do on the test. The elevation on the grade line at station 64 is 260.2. If they ask you, for example, what's the elevation at station 62, what would you do? Well, think about it. How far away is that from PVI in the horizontal direction? 300 feet. So if the line drops four in the vertical for every 100 foot, how much vertical drop will there be until we get to 62? It will be 12. All right? So that's how. All right. That, you need to learn how to find the elevation at each of those stations. Does everybody follow? And the way, and you do it on the, the same way to the right of the PPI as well. All right? Same way. Now, the next thing you need to learn how to do is what I, what I define to you as the offsets. All right? Now, I need for you to understand what we're talking about. What these elevations that we just <coughs> looked at together, that gives you the elevation on, <coughs> on the grade line. What we are really interested in is the elevation on the curve itself. All right? So if we somehow, tell me if you agree, if we somehow could decide what this distance is between the tangent line at any given station and the, the elevation of the curve at that same point, if we somehow can calculate that offset, then we can find the elevation on the curve. And really, that is what we are after. All right? So let's move on to the next slide. Here, slide 62 
shows you exactly what I was just talking about. All right? It's called tangent offsets. And next, I'm going to te teach you how to find that tangent offset for any given station. This is something that shows up on the test quite often. And what I will uh, use, the equation that I will use to help you identify this is this equation right here. And somebody asked what that T was. And here we are going to talk about it. All right? This is, this is the same equation that I showed you earlier. And you can use this equation to find the, the, the tangent offset. By the way, in that equation, this is a very simple equation. Let's find out what the ingredients are. In this equation, y, this thing, is the offset. So what we are calculating is the offset. Now, what are the other uh, parameters here? Well, um, E, let's start with E. E is this distance here. And I gave you an equation that will give you that. So just calculate that, and that stays constant for the curve. All right? What about x? This x is important. x, guys, x is the distance between the PVC and the point on the curve that we are interested in, in terms of stations. Did, did everybody follow that? Lowercase x is the distance between the PBC and the point at which you're interested in the tangent offset value. But remember, that's in terms of stations. Then T, capital T, here is the answer to what you asked. The capital T in this equation simply is the distance between the PVC and the PVI in terms of stations. Think about it. T is always equal to half the length of the curve. Write it down. Big T is always equal to the half of the length of the curve. All right? Now, remember in this equation, x and t both are squared. Don't forget to square those values. Now, help me apply that equation to come up with the offset, tangent offset at station 64. Now, don't just follow the, uh, don't look at my solution. Let's see if we can come up with the different ingredients. Y simply is what we are looking for, all right? What is x? that you substitute. Remember, small x is this, the distance between the PVC and the station that you're interested in, in terms of stations. So that would be 3. Does everybody see why? OK. Those are three stations. All right? So that's x, little x. What about e in that equation? e is 7, and two or three slides Previous to this, I showed you exactly how to calculate that. I gave you an equation. So apply that equation. You should come up with 7. And what about big T in here? What did I tell you? T is always half the length of the curve. So T is 4. That's where this 4 comes from. E is 7. We got the 7. And then 3, I showed you where the 3 came from. Cal uh, don't forget to square both 3 and 4. Solve for y, you come up with 3.94. Does, does everybody agree? Now, before we look at the next slide, I want you to give me the tangent offset at station 62, which would be approximately here. All right? So give me the tangent offset at, at station 62. Well, what would you use for x, small x? 
one because